as she was churning, she, she had ankle bracelets and bells that were like musical instruments playing ching 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 ching. And Yashoda Mai, in her love for Krishna, she was spontaneously composing poetry to glorify Krishna's form, Krishna's pastimes, and Krishna's qualities. As, as she was totally engrossed in remembering Krishna, chanting about Krishna with instrumentation of her bangles and her jewels, she was engaged and putting all the love of her heart into this service. And she was working very hard. She began to perspire, and the malati flowers that were decorating their hair were showering onto her feet. Because those flowers wanted to take, take shelter of her feet to see her motherly love for Krishna. And in that affection, milk sprouted from her body. And Krishna, who was in the next room sleeping, he is bhavagrahi. He accepts the love of his devotee. The milk that comes from Mother Yashoda's body is not just milk. It's liquid prema. It's the most intimate inconceivable, infinitely ecstatic love of her heart being offered to Krishna in the form of milk. And Krishna was so hungry for that milk, he couldn't sleep. He got up and he jumped out of bed and he ran to where Mother Yashoda was churning the, butt, the, the yogurt and he looked at her and held the churning rod in one hand and said, when I want your milk, there's no other duty for you to perform. He didn't say it, but that was his glance speaking. Her heart melted. She sat down and she placed Krishna on her lap and started feeding him. And as she was feeding him, she was looking in his beautiful face. She was seeing his little teeth. Sometimes as she would look in Krishna's mouth, she'd see these little white, like drops of milk, teeth growing in, and she would count the teeth like, like mothers like to do. Tears filled her eyes as she was looking in Krishna's beautiful face as he was drinking the milk of her love. Suddenly, in the next room, she was cooking with this Padma Ganda special milk. She was cooking preparations for Krishna for later. And that milk was boiling over due to the fire underneath it. Haracharyas explain in Vrindavan, everything is conscious. It is chintamani dham. Nothing is dead manner in the spiritual world when Krishna manifests his lila. The milk was only existing to be tasted by Krishna. But the milk was thinking, Mother Yashoda's love is so supreme. If Krishna is drinking the milk from her, her love will increase unlimitedly and Krishna's taste will increase unlimitedly. So what is the use of my existence? So let me enter fire. So the milk boiled over into the fire. You showed him I put down Krishna. And as soon as she came to pick the pot off the milk, all the milk that went into the fire jumped back into the pot by the kindness of Yashoda Mai. <laughs> Meanwhile, Krishna was thinking, why did she leave me for something else? Now actually, she was only doing it for Krishna because that was for Krishna also. But Krishna wanted to perform a pastime that will eternally be engraved in every devotee's heart. 
he became transcendentally angry. His teeth bit his beautiful little ruby red lips and he started to cry. He picked up a piece of stone boom, and smashed with his little tiny hands the clay pot that had the yogurt that you showed him while he was churning. And after breaking it and was spilling all over, Krishna was thinking, what more mischief shall I perform today? So he went into the next room and there he saw the butter that was churned from the day before was hanging from rafters by rope. And Krishna took a wooden grinding mortar and turned it upside down and climbed on it and reached up to get that butter. Then he called the monkeys. <laughs> and so many monkeys started jumping into the courtyard. And Krishna was eating the butter and he was feeding it to the monkeys. And oh, how the monkeys were so happy. It is explained that in Ram Leela, Ram was exiled into the forest for 14 years. He didn't have a kingdom. He didn't have any property. His only possessions were tree bark that he was wearing and his bows and his arrows. And Hanuman, Sugriva, Angada, all these monkeys, they worked so hard to build that bridge across the Indian Ocean to Sri Lanka. They fought so hard against Ravana and Kumbhakarna and Indrajit and the whole Rakshasha army. And Ram had nothing to give them in return. So Krishna called the monkeys and he was telling them, you did so much seva for me in my past incarnation. Now let me pay you back with this butter. And he was distributing. what it would be like to be one of those monkeys. Jumping around, Krishna glancing at you. Each monkey is thinking, Krishna loves me personally. He's giving me the best possible butter and the monkeys are eating the butter and Krishna's giving him more and more and more. And meanwhile, Yashoda Maya comes back to where she was feeding Krishna and Krishna's not there. And then she sees the pot is broken and there's butter spilled all over the place. And she touched her nose with her finger and thought, this is the doing of my Gopal. And she saw little buttery footprints on the floor. And she followed those butter footprints into the next room. She picked up a little because after all, as a mother, she had to give a little fear to Krishna to teach him how to behave properly. She peeked in the next room and saw little Gopal on this grinding mortar distributing butter to monkeys. And while he was doing it, his eyes were going this way and that way in fear of Yashoda. So very quietly, slowly, she approached him from behind because she wanted to grab him. But while she was approaching, when the monkeys saw the stick in her hand, they all <laughs> they started jumping out the windows and jumping out. And Krishna saw the monkeys with fear in their eyes, and he turned around, saw Yashoda Mai, and he jumped off the winning ground mortar and ran. You showed him I ran after him and he ran and she ran and he ran and she ran and they were running. Now the Srimad Bhagavatam tells us he's the absolute truth. He's faster than the speed of wind. Even the greatest jnanis with the 
topmost knowledge of all the scriptures, they can never catch the Lord. Even the yogis, with, by developing the highest supernatural powers, they cannot catch the Lord. So how in the world possibly could this simple gopi catch Krishna? But she wanted to catch him, to protect him from his mischief. And as she was running, she was perspiring. And flowers were falling on her feet, taking shelter of her feet, because the flowers were thinking that who is this Yashoda? The power of her love has conquered the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. And ultimately, According to Jiva Goswami, when Krishna was looking forward, Yashodamai couldn't catch him. But when he looked back to see where she was, she was able to catch him. Krishna was caught by his mother. And then she started to chastise him. And Krishna was crying. He said, put down that stick. Please put down that stick. Yashodamai, he said, you are the king of butter thieves. And Krishna said that you're calling me the king of thieves? Well, I definitely didn't get it from my father's side. I must have got it for your side. <laughs> Yashodamai said, you are the king of the monkeys. Associ because you're associating with these monkeys, you have become just like a monkey. And Krishna said, well, if you don't like that, then I'll leave home and just live with the monkeys. And Yashoda Maya was thinking, he might actually do that. I have so many responsibilities to perform for Krishna and for Nanda today and for the Brijabhasis. He may just live home to live with monkeys. I have to protect him. Meanwhile, Gopal was crying, put down the stick. And Queen Kunti, in one of her beautiful prayers, she describes this scene, that his limbs are trembling in fear. His lips are quivering. Tears are pouring from his eyes as they're moving from one side to the next, trying to look away from his mother. And those tears are mixing with the mascara, the cudgel that is covering, that is under his eyes, and making beautiful s streaks all over his body, which is like a monsoon cloud. Kunti Devi is praying Krishna, the absolute supreme Lord of all lords, is feared by fear personified. But yet, he's afraid of his mother. This is the power of the love of Vrindavan. And Krishna is not pretending to be afraid. It's not just a show. He is so much conquered by the love of his mother to increase her maternal affection. To the degree her maternal affection increases, his affection increases, and they are both conquering each other by love. This is the highest revelation of God and its ultimate crescendo is in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. Mother Yashoda was thinking, Krishna is too much afraid, so she threw away the stick. And she said, I, I must perform my chores, so now I'm going to tie you up. And because this wooden grinding mortar was an accomplice for your stealing, I'm going to tie you together. So she took a rope 
a very beautiful silken rope that was used to tie the calves when the mothers were being milked, or sometimes to tie the rear legs of the cows when they were being milked. Mother Yashoda was like the cow and Krishna was like her little calf. So she took this silk rope to tie it around Krishna's waist. When she did, it was exactly two fingers in width, too small. She took another piece of rope and tied it to the original rope, wrapped it around his waist. It was two fingers too small. She took another rope and another rope and another rope. Each time it was the width of two fingers small. Yashoda Maya was struck with wonder. She was thinking, I've already tied together over 150 feet of rope and Krishna's little tiny waist is not growing. It's only this big and every time I put, go to put it around his waist, it's the same two fingers too small. Soon she ran out of rope and other gopis, they heard about this. They came running with all the ropes of their house. And the gopis were giving more and more rope and Yashodamai was tying again and again and again, each time two fingers too small. It was inconceivable. How is it possible? How to tie up God, the supreme absolute truth, is the cause of everything that exists. Everything is simultaneously inside of Krishna and nothing can be outside of Krishna. For Krishna there's no interior or exterior. He's the all-pervading Brahman. How do you tie him with a rope? But Mother Yashoda kept trying. And there were all different color ropes coming from all directions and the gopis were laughing. It was a festival of ropes. And the gopis were saying to Yashoda Mai, can't you see it is not Gopal's destiny today to get tied up? And Yashoda Mai said, no, no, I have to keep trying for two reasons. One is I just want to know how much rope it takes to wrap around the little waist of Gopal. I have to find this out. And another thing is I have to protect Gopal by keeping him tied up nicely while I'm doing my chores. Yashoda Mai was tying more and more and more ropes and ultimately she was perspiring and her sari was becoming loosened and Krishna was seeing the hard work that she was offering in motherly love and by his own free will Bhagavan Sri Krishna allowed himself to be tied up by his mother Yashoda. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur tells that the width of the two fingers represent in order to, in order to conquer Krishna, this is what's required. The sincere heartfelt endeavor and hard work of a devotee to serve, to perform their sadhana, to remain pure, to please Krishna ultimately. The hard work and sincere efforts to please Krishna. And when Krishna sees that, then he bestows his causeless mercy. The reciprocation of the sincerity of our devotion attracts Krishna's mercy and the combination of the two is our love conquers Krishna.
in this beautiful pastime. Shukadev Goswami explains how Brahma, Shiva, even the eternal Lakshmi, goddess of fortune, never ever could receive the mercy that Yashoda Mai received. Because she loved Krishna so intimately as her own son, she bound him, she controlled him by the rope of her motherly love. And from this day on, he is celebrated as Damodar, one who is bound around the waist by the love of his mother. Yashodamai then went to perform her duties. But before going, she had some cowherd boys there to watch over Krishna. And Krishna started laughing. First he started crying. And then he started laughing. And he told the cowherd boys, now we're going to do even more mischief. And they were telling jokes. And Krishna was bound up by this grinding mortar. And he was just he was crawling and the grinding mortar was slightly moving and then he'd crawl a little more and slightly move, slightly move and the coward boys were cheering and Krishna said, well, I'm like this, but all of you now, nobody's expecting it. You should go to the gopis' houses and steal their butter and bring it back for me. So gopi, gopas were going out and stealing butter. They were raiding the gopis' houses and me like Krishna, he saw in the courtyard, just a little distance away, the Yamala Arjuna trees. Gigantic trees. They were very ancient, huge like mountains, very wide and thick. And Arjuna trees have extremely deep roots. My dear God brother Dina Bandhu Prabhu, he was telling us that once he went to Mauritius, where there was a cyclone, and so many trees were torn down, but Arjuna trees could not be moved because they have huge roots and very, very strong bases. Gopal looked at those Arjuna trees and he understood exactly who they were. That the two sons of Kuvera, Nala Kuvera and Manigriva, were cursed by Narada Muni to become these trees. And whenever my devotee curses someone, it's always a benediction. So I must honor Narada Muni, my beloved devotee's curse, by liberating these trees and giving them the highest love. Somehow or other, those trees were sitting and watching Krishna's pastimes every day and every night. The, in brief, it's a very deep story, but we're getting very deeply late. Sukadev Goswami tells how Mani Griva and Nalo Kuvera, the sons of Kuvera, were so wealthy and so physically beautiful, learned, famous, young. They had everything. And they became very proud, intoxicated. They were taking various types of intoxications and with beautiful young heavenly ladies, even the heavenly worlds, they were bathing and having water sports together in a lake and they were all without clothes. And Narada Muni happened to walk by. And the ladies, they understood we shouldn't be in front of a great sage like this. So they got out of the water real quickly and put on their clothes. But Mani Griva and Nala Kuvera were so 
out. They didn't think that it was required that they had to respect anyone. They were intoxicated by ahankar, ego. Queen Kunti prays like this, that the greatest disqualifications for spiritual life are a high birth, physical beauty, extravagant wealth, and very high education. Why are they such disqualifications? Because they make you proud. When you're proud, you make offenses to others because you think you're superior to others. It just, ego, ahankar, destroys your service attitude. And therefore, you cannot feelingly cry out the holy names. Lord Chaitanya made it very simple. What should we aspire for higher than any other goal? Prema Bhakti. And that's given to us by the mercy of the Lord when we are in the spirit of Gopi Bhartur Padakamalayavara Dadas Adas Adas Anudas. Servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of the Lord. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu defeated many, much of the greatest opposition by taking the humblest position to show us. Unless we humbly cry out God's name, we have no power against Maya. Narada Muni saw that and he cursed them. Actually, he blessed them. You are so proud of your beauty, your birth, your wealth, your knowledge. Become trees. You like to be naked? All right, be a tree. But be a tree in Krishna's backyard so you could see Krishna's pastimes. They were waiting there for thousands of years as trees before Krishna took birth in Mahavan. Sometime we have to be patient. But they became completely purified watching Krishna's pastimes and hearing all the Brijabhasis chanting Krishna's glories. So Krishna crawled with the grid and grinding mortar behind him, tied up. And he crawled right between the two Arjuna trees, but the grinding mortar got stuck between them. And he pulled. He just crawled, and the force of his little crawling caused the grinding mortar to push the trees. There was a massive sound that practically created a tumultuous earthquake. <laughs> As the trees came crashing to the ground, everyone in the entire of Brajabhumi heard this monstrous crash. And they all came running. What happened? What happened? Meanwhile, Manigriva and Nala Kuvera, they came out of the trees in their beautiful celestial demigod forms and offered beautiful prayers to Krishna. By the grace of Narada Muni, we have been cleansed of our false ego, and now all we want is to be your eternal servants, to never forget you, and to always chant your glories. And Krishna blessed them and sent them 
in the perfected spiritual state back to their abodes. Meanwhile, the cowherd boys were watching. They tried to untie Krishna, but they couldn't because it was tied by Yashoda. But then Nanda Maharaj came running and Krishna was laughing. Krishna was with his friends. He was laughing and smiling with them. He just knocked down the trees and demigods came out and offered prayers. It was fun. <laughs> but then when Nanda Maharaj came just to increase the excitement of the event, Krishna started to cry. <laughs> and Nanda Maharaj thought, these gigantic trees have just fallen and Krishna's right inches away from both of the fallen trees right in the middle and none of them fell on Krishna. How is this? And meanwhile, Yashoda Mai, she fell unconscious thinking that she tied up Krishna and because of her tying up Krishna, now he, these trees have fallen on him and he's stuck to this grinding mortar. She was speechless. Nanda Maharaj untied Krishna. It was tied with parental affection and it could only be untied by the love of a parent. And then he put Krishna on his lap and embraced him. And Krishna embraced Nanda Maharaj. And Nanda Maharaj with the other cowherd men took Krishna to the Yamuna River and they all bathed together. And then Nanda Maharaj brought Krishna and gave him, brought him to the cows to get auspicious blessings. And Nanda Maharaj said to Krishna while he was sitting on his lap, he said, who tied you up like this? Nanda Maharaj knew. And Krishna said, my mother did. And Nanda Maharaj said, would you like, to, why did your mother do that? And Krishna said, you ask her. Do you want to see your mother? He said, no, I don't want to see your mother. I only want to be with you. And meanwhile, Mother Yashoda was hearing all the news that Krishna didn't want to even see her. Krishna was appearing to be angry at her for tying him up. And she was speechless. She was weeping. She was crying that she had displeased and caused pain and danger to her son. And Rohini Devi came running with the other gopis and said, Krishna, your mother is in great distress. She wants to give you the milk. She wants to feed you her milk. And Krishna said, I don't want her milk. Nanda Maharaj said, then what milk will you drink? He said, I will, milk, I will drink the milk of the cows that I will mix with pure natural sugar. Well, if you don't want to be with your mother, who will you play with? And Krishna was on his father's lap and he put his arm around his father. He said, I will play with my father. And Nanda Maharaj said, if you're angry with Yashoda Mai for doing this, for tying you up, then I will hit her. And he put a fist. He was just doing it jokingly. And Krishna reached out his head and said, No, Father, no, Father, don't do that, don't do that. Krishna wouldn't even look at Mother Yashoda. He wouldn't even look in the direction of Mother Yashoda. And Nanda Maharaj said, and Rohini Devi was amplifying his words that you're breaking her heart. She's dying. And when Krishna heard that, that his mother was dying in guilt, Krishna jumped off his father's lap and ran, crying out, Mother, 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 I am yours. And he ran into Mother Yashoda's arms and Yashoda Mai bathed him with her tears, put him on his, her lap and fed him her precious love with her milk.
And for three days, Yashoda Mai was too ashamed to show her face to Nanda Maharaj. But then Krishna brought Nanda Maharaj. Through this pastime, Krishna churned the nectar of devotion. Through the dynamics of the various beautiful rasas or spiritual loving emotions between himself and his devotees. This is the unique transcendental quality of Sri Vrindavan that exalts it millions of times beyond any other level of liberation or any other level of pure love of God. Krishna appeared in this age with the compassion and the love of Sri Radharani to reveal even to the most fallen, unqualified people from any part of the world, even Jagais and Madhais, to give entrance into the pastimes of Vrindavan. Sri Chaitanya quoted that beautiful poet that some people out of fear of material existence, they worship the Vedas, the Puranas, or the Mahabharata. But as for me, I worship Nanda Maharaj, in, her, in whose courtyard the Supreme Brahman, the Absolute Truth, is crawling around like a little baby. These are the pastimes of Gokul Mahavan. Damodar is forever resplendent in his Leela to show the world that when we do not want wealth, power, fame, followers, liberation for suffering, or even elevation to Vakunta when all we want is to please Krishna and please Krishna's devotees, then Krishna is bound. He's conquered by our love. This is Vrindavan, where Krishna eternally conquers his devotees and his devotees eternally conquers Krishna. Srila Prabhupada traveled the world around 12 times just to share this most precious blessing with all of us. Let us sincerely offer our humble prayers to Sri Damodar.